Welcome back to part two of this tutorial. Make sure you check out part one before you watch this. So what we're going to be doing first is creating a dependency injection container. Since Azure Functions does not natively come with one, I'm going to be showing you how to create one yourself. And then we're going to create a send email command handler here, and then we will register that to the container that we just made. We're also going to then register our Azure Q library stuff, similar to the web app, so we can have access to our IQ communicator. And then once we do that, we're going to configure the Azure functions to get ready to take in the messages that we sent earlier, which is these two messages right here, so that it can deserialize and send it off to the command handler. So the command handler can send it off to the SMTP client. After we finish all this, I'm going to then show you how to deploy it to Azure Functions and how it will look on the Azure portal. Let's go to our Azure Functions project. I'm going to delete this and let's create our folder structuring. So the first thing I'm going to do is always infrastructure. And this is just going to contain the dependency injection container. So let's add this and have our DI container. And let's create the next folder, which will be the email processing folder. And like I said, the reason why I named this Azure Functions is so that I can have multiple services with multiple triggers here. So I'm going to click Add. I'm going to say Add New Function. And this will just pre-select Azure Functions for me. And the name, what I tend to do is I always go the domain and or feature what it does. And then I always name it with the trigger. So Q trigger. Just so that when I read it, I can quickly tell what it is. That and then we'll select Q trigger and I'll delete these because I can just configure it when it's created. Okay, let's just move this down a bit just to kind of make it a little bit more readable. And I'll just clear this out. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to need our command handler. So let's add that. And this is just going to be a regular class and we're going to just call it send email command handler. Very quickly, just create an interface for this. Public interface, and then an I command handler. And what it's going to do is it's going to just be able to handle the send email command. And that's just going to be the command. Okay, and this send email command comes from our Azure Q library, so let's add that as a reference. And one of the things you're going to notice right away is that there is a little exclamation mark, and if we open up our error list, we're going to see that Azure Functions is running on 2.1 while the library is 2.2, and that means that Azure Functions currently is one version behind ASP.NET. So there's two ways you can kind of resolve this. You can either use net standard for your library classes, or you can just downgrade this to 2.1. So I'm going to change that to one and I'm change that to one. Reload the project and I will rebuild and then I'll resolve this namespace as soon as it um, resolves this dependency. Perfect. Now let's resolve this namespace. All right. And then the last thing we'll do is, uh, well, let's just resolve these implementations. And then we'll make sure that our web app is still perfect. We have all of our dependencies. Let's go create our dependency injection container now. We'll go here and I'm going to make it public sealed. All right. And then we're going to create a private instance. So private static read only my service provider. And it's going to be an instance. And then we're going to create a public getter for it. So public static I service provider and call it uppercase instance and just use this lambda statement here. And we're going to create a static constructor and a private constructor. And this is how you create a thread safe uh, singleton in C sharp. So, and let's create a builder to instantiate our uh, instance. So, private static my service provider, and we're going to have build. And we're just going to quickly resolve this here. And let's start filling up the in between. So, var services, 
whatever this is equals new service collection which we will use this to gather all of our dependencies and then the service let's just build service provider right away now let's fill in our services so services dot add um let's go to our web app and let's copy copy this right here so we don't have to type it out all right and you're going to notice that we need our configuration so let's resolve this namespace so to get our configuration we create a configuration class using the configuration builder builder and that comes from Microsoft extensions configuration. And this part is very important. So set base path. We're just going to set it as directory and this probably needs a namespace. And we're going to get current directory. Then we're going to add JSON values and the JSON values we're going to use is from this file right here. So let's just copy the name first. Paste that here. And we're going to say optional is true. This is very important. And I'll explain after I write the next line. Uh, reload on change is not that important, but this one right here add environment variables. And we're going to build. So the reason why optional is very important is because when you deploy this to Azure, it won't actually have this file. If you look in the uh, git ignore, Azure Functions defaultly ignores this so that you don't commit this because on the cloud, you're going to be using environment variables and that's how your Azure Functions deployed is going to use it versus your Azure Functions local, which will use this. All right, so to keep that in mind, it's going to be very important. So then let's now add our command handler so services let's here and we'll add this as a singleton and add an i right there and resolve the namespace now let's take a look at setting up our command handler so we're going to go here and one of the things we're going to need for our command handler is we're going to need a email host a email port a uh, username and a password. So let's encapsulate that in a strongly typed email config. And because it's such a simple class, I'm just going to copy and paste what is on the inside of it. And once again, that's your host, your port, your sender, and your password. So let's make that public. And we are going to need to copy over the configurations here. So once again, copy that. And I will just paste that here. And it's going to be the Gmail SMTP uh, hostname, the port, a username, and your super secret password. So once we do that, let's go to our DI container and we will register that. So we're just going to register that as a singleton. So add singleton. And we're just going to say we want, I'm just going to move this down a bit. We're going to want a new email config and that email config is going to take in the port host uh, email, um, sender email and the password so let's do that so we'll grab it from the configuration and we are going to say email host and the next one we're going to convert dot to int 32 and we're going to grab the email port. And the next one is the email sender. And the email password. And we'll just close that off. So now we have a configuration. Let's go back to the command handler. And we'll just first inject in the email config that we got. Set that up as a private read only and let's delete the not implemented, make that async. 
So let's set up our using statements. And the first thing we're going to need is a SMTP client. So new SMTP client. And that SMTP client is going to be expecting uh, SM, oops, TP client. All that. And like I said, the, it's going to be expecting a host and a port. So let's use our email config.host and our email config.port. Okay. And we'll also need to pass in the additional credentials. So credentials, those new network credentials. Uh, credentials. Uh, I think that's singular. Yeah. And then email sender config dot sender. So you need the username and the password. So email config dot password. All right, and then afterwards you gotta just enable SSL because that's a rule with Gmail. And we're going to then use a uh, go using, and we're going to create a message. This new mail message, and we're going to a email config dot sender. So this is the person who's sending it, and then we're going to say command that who you're sending it to which is the to email. And we're going to say command dot subject. And then we're going to need the body. So command dot body. All right. So once you create the email message from the email client, you're going to then say await client dot send mail async. Right. And the mail is the message. That's a very simple implementation of setting up SMTP with Gmail. Let's go to the email queue trigger and piece it all together. So first thing we're going to do is change this to the email box. And since we put it in our route names, we can have a single place to do that. So route names. And then we're going to send it to the, from the email box and minimize that and the connection we're going to need is right here azure web job storage and then this i'm just going to change it to message so it's more consistent and let's uh, make this a sync task since we're using asynchronous so now we should be able to build out everything so let's first wrap this in a using statement and then if it does blow up we'll say log dot log error and that and we're going to say something went wrong with the email queue trigger and i guess we'll just um, attach the message on there and hopefully it, if it is sensitive information obviously don't do so And uh, let's start building the inside. Oh, it's also very important to throw so that it knows that it was not successful. So if you do swallow your exceptions, the email queue trigger will not think that anything went wrong and it will just not requeue the message for you. But if you do throw the message, it will requeue up to five times. So let's create our queue communicator. So this is going to be very similar to the um, one in the ASP.NET Core side of things. So rather than us queuing and sending, we're now going to dequeue and grab it and deserialize. So let's do that. This equals di container, because our di container is going to have all of our dependencies. Resolve the namespace, and we're going to say grab the instance, and then from the instance, we're going to get service, and the one we're going to get is the queue communicator. So queue communicator. And from the queue communicator, we're going to get our command out because we're going to be able to read it now. So from our queue communicator, we're going to read the message. Read. Um, you're going to need to add using microsoft.extension.dependencyinjection. Now we have our queue communicator. 
We're going to read. And the message we're going to read is send email command. And from here, we're going to pass in the message. So this is what I meant earlier when I, uh, sorry, wrong one, when I said that going in, the library we created here kind of helped with the serializing and deserializing so that we know on both sides of it what to expect. Now that we have our command, let's create our handler. And we'll do the same thing where we grab our di get service. And we want to grab I send email command handler. And the handler is just going to handle the command. And it's asynchronous, so let's put await. Now we should be able to run our application and see a DQ. So I'm going to set this as my starting project. And remember, we have two messages here that we need to DQ. So I'm going to put it right here and I'm going to run it. And as soon as it starts, we can see that these messages will start to DQ. And we're going to have Azure Functions here. So you're going to see the setup of it, and then you're going to see a bunch of configurations, and you're going to see that the two messages right here were DQ'd. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to get the communicator. And remember, both are running at the same time, so I'm going to have to step in a very specific way, hopefully. So it's going to be um, DQ this into the command. So let's do that. So now we have the messages. Thank you. We will uh, thank you for reaching out. We will contact you shortly. So this is the one to this uh, contact. And then the other one should be to the admin. So let's step into our command handler now. And we will just put a debug here. And all of this is just very simple code. So I'm expecting it to work. And here we have our message. And that message is just going to contain that body that test has reached out via contact form. Please respond back at test.com. So this is the email one. And remember, like I said, there's two of them since they both were queued. We will, re we will contact you shortly. So this is the one to say thank you for reaching out. And we will send that off as well. And because I don't really have a valid uh, Gmail setup, it's going to throw an error. And because it threw an error, we will now see it requeue again. But let's say if I did successfully um, set up my Gmail with a proper password, then it would send off. And if you just kind of swallow the error here, uh, so I'm going to go here. Let's let that flow. And I'm just going to then stop it here. So then it's never read through the error. You look here now, your messages will be gone. The final thing we want to do is kind of just run it all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this part out and I'm just going to say await task dot complete task. Just so we pretend like we send it off successfully. Oops, it's not a method. And I'm just going to close everything down and I'm going to set both the web app and the Azure functions as our startup project multiple projects. I'm going to set this one up and this one up. Apply. Say OK. And then we're going to run both as our startup. Now let's start the application. Start. I'm going to give it a second to spin up. All right. I'm just going to move that up to the top and I'm going to just drag over the contact form that we have it here. And we should be able to see as soon as we send the contact information that the Azure functions will start scrolling down. So let's say Bob the builder has sent a inquiry of some kind and we're going to say Bob at the builder.com and hit submit and we send a thank you message back and their message has been queued. So we have one for the thank you for contacting us and one to notify the admin. So we're going to stop the application. And one of the things you'll need to do is make sure you sign into your Azure account on the top right side. We're going to right click on the Azure functions 
we're going to publish and create new. I'm just going to leave that out. Click run. And I'm going to then choose my resource group. If you don't have one, you can create a new one here. Uh, call this awesome shop for Azure functions. And the hosting plan I'm going to do is choose a consumption plan. And I'm just going to call this Azure functions. And then I'm going to also call this consumption just so I know what it is. And I am currently in Canada Central. So I'm going to change that location. Say yes to that. And you're going to need a storage account because it's going to need to be able to store all of its log files and all of its configurations. So standard redundancy, awesome shop, Azure functions. And I'm okay with that name. So I'm going to say yes to that. And we're going to click create. And it's just going to take a couple of moments. So we'll continue when it's done. Okay, so now that you've deployed it, there's one last thing you have to do before you have your Azure functions working. And that is to go to the Azure functions portal. And we'll click here, you search functions, and you will receive Azure functions uh, app or apps. And the difference is one is a list view of the different Azure functions project. And the other is a more detailed view. I tend to just use the apps one. So then you expand here. So we have our awesome shop Azure functions. And the Azure functions triggers that you have will all be listed under here. So we have a bunch of different ones, it will be right here. And application settings is where you will need to configure all of the app settings. And this is the final step you'll need to do before your app is actually running properly. And we already have our Azure Web Job Storage connection string set up properly because we've just um, created one when we published. So to add a new uh, setting, you go new application setting. And then we go back here and we're just going to basically copy and paste one of these just to show you guys how to do that. So we're going to copy this, paste that there, go back here and have that here. So you just have to do it for the rest of your applications uh, settings. I'm just going to not do that just because it's just all four of them are just going to be copy pasting. But this is where you would set up your settings. So let's go back here. I just want to show you one last thing, which is where you would kind of see uh, similar to the console when we had local, when we ran our Azure functions, you would see it in monitor. But since Azure functions has updated, they are heavily reliant on app settings. So what you would do is click configure and set up your application settings. And you would be able to see the similar monitoring to what you saw on your local development. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. If you learned something, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content. I have a lot more videos kind of lined up, but it takes a little bit of time to do the research and to actually do the recording and editing and process. So once again, if you want to help support this channel, like, subscribe, and comment in the videos. And I'll see you guys next time.